what's up everybody? This is Brian and I want to welcome you back to Saving Data in iOS video tutorial series. In this video tutorial, we'll dive into JSON. JSON is a popular format for transmitting data over the web. In this video tutorial, you'll learn how to incorporate JSON into your app. Before we dive into the details of showing you how to incorporate JSON, some of you may want to know actually what JSON actually is. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation, and it can be used to transmit data over the web. It's also how you create objects in JavaScript, making it really convenient. Essentially, JavaScript breaks up its objects into key value pairs. The keys acts as the property, whereas the value is your data. This makes your data really easy to read. JSON works as an alternative to XML, and this is true to a point. The major difference is that XML is quite verbose while JSON is quite terse. JSON supports the following primitive types for creating objects, a string, a boolean, a number, and a null. Thankfully, we have access to collections as well, such as dictionaries and arrays. Arrays are designated by using brackets, where dictionaries, or actually objects in JavaScript, are designated by braces. Fields are separated by commas. Colons are used between key value pairs. Here's an example. We have a key called my object. The colon sets a value, which is a brace. The brace indicates a JavaScript object which contains more key value pairs. Inside the object is a field called attribute name, and it contains the value of cheese. You'll notice that the property has a comma after it, indicating another key value pair. To read and write JSON, you're going to use an object called NSJSON serialization. This class converts your JSON code into actual objects or it will take your objects and convert them into JSON. In terms of writing JSON, you must create a top-level object. This object must either be an array or a dictionary. Next, you'll add your objects to it. The objects that you can add to JSON must be a type of string, array, dictionary, NS number, and NS null. Needless to say, those are the only types that you can read back from your JSON as well. That said, all keys must be strings. Let's see this in action. In the last video tutorial, I walked you through the process of parsing XML and creating objects from them. In this video tutorial, we're going to take those objects and now convert them into JSON. First, I'm gonna delete this little for loop that printed out the games. And next, we're now gonna convert these games into actual JSON objects. The top level of our JSON is going to be an array of any objects. And this is because JSON works with multiple types. Now we're gonna loop through each of our games. And I'm going to create a dictionary that's going to store all the various keys of these games. This dictionary's key is going to be a string and the type it will be is an any object. Now I'm going to set the dictionary's keys off of the various properties of the object. For the rating, I need to convert the integer to an NS number. Finally, once I have my dictionary done, I'll append it to my top level object. At this point, I now have the structure for my JSON data. I'm going to create a new object called JSON data, and now I'm going to serialize it. I'm going to use the NSJSON serialization object and I'm going to call the static method data with JSON object. I'm going to pass in my top level, and you can see we have a few writing options as well. For the sake of display, we're going to use pretty printed. Now you can see here, you can see here that this has correctly converted my objects into JSON. The only thing left to do is to save those objects out. I'm going to get a reference to my file manager to do this. Now that I have my URL all set and we've done this throughout the series, 
I'm going to create a JSON URL off of it. And I'll just simply do this by calling URL by appending path component. And I'm going to print out my JSON URL. And finally, we're going to write my JSON data to the URL. I'm going to select this path here, and I'm going to open this up in my finder. Click the Go menu item, click Go to Finder, paste in my URL, and you can see here we have our video games JSON file. Let's preview this. And as you can see, our objects have been converted to JSON. Now we're going to read that JSON in. And I'm going to comment out my JSON data, like so. And I'm going to create a new JSON data here. We'll call this JSON read data. And this will simply be an NS data contents of URL. And we'll pass in the JSON URL, like so. Next, I'm going to create a variable for my video games. And now we are going to parse the actual JSON data. Again, I'm calling NS JSON serialization, and I'm going to call the static method JSON object with data. I'll pass in my JSON read data, and for reading options, if I press the dot, you can see we have mutable containers and mutable leaves. I'm going to choose mutable containers. And you can see here that it has correctly parsed my JSON data. Now I need to convert that data into objects. Here we do some casting to make things just easier to parse. Then as we loop through the games, we do a guard check to populate temporary variables based on various properties within that JSON. And of course, if one of those do doesn't exist, then the loop will then continue to the next game. Once we have that set, we're going to create a new video game and, and we're going to use our values to populate its properties. Now that we've populated our video games, we can print them all out. And you can see here, we've saved to JSON, read it back in, and then converted that JSON into objects. That's it for this video tutorial, but as always, we like to leave off with a challenge. In your challenge, you're going to parse some XML, convert it to JSON and write it out, and then read it back in. For more information, check out the challenge document, which will walk you through this crazy process. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.